In this video, we're going to be discussing applied maxima and minima. So essentially, given a real world problem, we would like to use all of the tools that we have established from calculus to be able to solve that problem. So in the case when we are required to maximize or minimize a value, observe that our calculus tools related to maxima and minima, meaning your extreme values, actually become useful. So keeping that in mind, I now have a five-step process or a guide for solving maximum or minimum problems that you would be receiving. So step one is to draw an appropriate diagram if possible. So let's suppose that we were given a problem to maximize the profit of um, a firm. So then maybe in that case, they, you would not necessarily need a diagram. But then let's suppose that we were trying to, um, let's say, minimize the cost associated with building a fence for some garden, then, then it may be possible for you to draw a diagram which um, outlines the area that that fence will be covering. Right, so step two, set up an expression for the quantity that you need to maximize or minimize. So if you're maximizing profit, you need to set up the expression for the profit function. Step three, rewrite the expression from step two as a function of one variable. Now this is necessary because all of the tools we've learned in calculus is based on function being a function of one variable. And also ensure that you make a note of what the domain of the function is. Right, so what is the domain? Step four, find and test the critical values of the function you obtained in step three. And also do not forget to evaluate the endpoints. Because remember, when we looked at finding extreme values and closed intervals, you were required to evaluate endpoints. And finally, in step five, interpret your answer. So whatever you've gotten in step four, ensure that you're able to interpret it and also ensure that you've answered the question that was being asked. All right, so keeping this five-step procedure in mind, let's consider the following example. So the demand equation for a manufacturer's product is P equals to 80 minus Q divided by 4, where Q is bounded between 0 and 80. Right, so remember Q refers to quantity, so it's the number of units, and P refers to price per unit. So of course we require that quantity cannot be negative, hence it is bounded below by 0. Right, so the question now is, what is the maximum revenue? So we know we're maximizing revenue. So in this case, it's not necessary to draw a diagram. So step one is out. What does step two says? It says set up an expression for the quantity that you're going to maximize or minimize. So that means we want an expression for revenue. Revenue is equal to price times quantity. So that means that revenue is equal to P times Q based on our notation. But now observe that we have revenue as a function of two variables. So this is where step three comes in. Step three tells you to rewrite your function in terms of one variable only. But observe that we have the demand function. So P can be written as 80 minus Q divided by four times Q. So that means upon simplification, that is 80 times Q minus Q squared because I'm multiplying this term by Q divided by 4. So now observe that step 3 has been satisfied because R, revenue, is now a function of quantity. So I can rewrite it like that. 80 Q minus Q squared divided by 4. And now I can simplify this. 80 Q divided by 4 is 20 times Q minus q squared divided by 4, I can rewrite that as minus a quarter q squared. And we know that q is bounded by 0 and 80. So we've got a domain for our function. Right, step 4, find the critical values and test them. So we now need to compute the derivative of r with respect to q in order to find the critical values. So what is the derivative of 20q minus a quarter q squared? That's just going, so derivative with respect to q. 
that is 20, minus a half q. And remember, we're now going to equate this to 0 and solve for q to determine the critical values. So this now tells me that minus a half q equals to minus 20, and therefore q equals to positive 40. So this is the critical value that I've found. So now we need to evaluate what's happening at the critical value. So if I place my critical value on the number line, what is happening to the left of Q and what is happening to the right of Q, right, when I evaluate F prime. So if I plug in um, a value less than 40 into the derivative, observe that I will then obtain a positive answer, right? So if you had to perhaps plug in Q equals to 10 into this, you would get a positive answer. But then take a value greater than 40, then observe that you will get a negative answer. For example, if you plugged in Q equals to 50. So what has happened to this graph? There is a rise and then there is a fall. So that means at X, sorry, at Q equals to 40, we have a relative maximum. But let's also observe what is happening at the endpoints. So our endpoint is 0 and 80. So if I had to plug in 0 into this, um, uh, let's see, into this function, observe that I then get a value of 20. And if I plug in a value of, of 80 into this function, so half of 80 is 40, 20 minus 40 gives me a negative answer. So that means that this is not just a relative maximum, this is an absolute maximum because it was higher than all of the values I had obtained when I plugged in 0 and when I plugged in 80. So that means the revenue, so step 5, I'm now interpreting my answer and answering the question. The revenue is maximum at Q equals to 40. And what is the revenue at Q equals to 40? Revenue at 40 is 400. So plugging in 40 into your revenue function, which is this function here, you would then observe that the answer is 400. So that is the maximum revenue that this manufacturer would obtain from the sale of his product, which is 400.